Nathan Gilchrist, assignment 18.1, sports injuries. So, I'm Nathan Gilchrist and this is my sports injuries assignment, assignment 18.1. So, a sports injury is something that would prevent an athlete from taking part in physical activities. Um, these injuries can either be extrinsic or intrinsic. Um, extrinsic is coming from outside of the body and intrinsic is from within the body. So an example of an extrinsic injury would be from factors such as environment or equipment and intrinsic would be from lack of physical preparation, so e.g. a warm-up or yeah, so on. Preventative measures. Um, firstly, the role of the coach, uh, the, such as clear communication and his qualifications. These can affect the athletes under him as um, if he does not communicate well enough, then the athletes will not know what to do and how to conduct themselves. Qualifications. Um, if a coach has certain qualifications, he'll be more aware of how to conduct a, a coaching session, for example, and uh, these will help keep everything safe. Environment and equipment. So risk assessments are assessments that you take of the uh, facilities that you're playing in or the equipment that you're using. This will help identify risks and uh, rank them from uh, the likelihood of them happening and the severity of them if they are likely to happen and how to eliminate uh, these risks. And maintaining equipment, this could be um, making sure all the equipment works properly so no injuries could take place from faulty equipment and personal protective equipment, otherwise known as PPE, is used um, for the individual player's safety, so such as shin pads or gun guards in hockey. And what are these preventative measures for? Uh, these are to prevent injuries from happening. Um, so these are just in place you know, to protect the players and all participants. Um, so one of the extrinsic risks could be coaching, otherwise or more specifically poor coaching. Um, Coaches have a responsibility to teach the correct technique in their respective sport. Um, by them coaching their correct, correct technique, this will help players understand how to play and how not to play. And um, if, for example, if they use the wrong technique, then this will, all this could cause injury to other players as well as, them, as, well as themselves. So, um, an example of injuries that could take place is in rugby, if you have a poor tackling technique, your neck and shoulders could get injured. Um, and if you have the wrong technique, you could injure other players by, for example, tackling high and then injuring their necks or upper body. And this could cause some serious damage. And preventative measures could be, uh, for the coaches part, they could participate in coaching courses to help them understand the correct way to play rugby um, or as you can see adapting coaching styles to uh, assist players when they have the wrong technique. And how, is, how is adapting coaching styles going to help? Um, for example if you say to a player how to um, tackle in rugby let's say and he does not understand the way you are coaching him so taking it from another angle or explaining it differently um, maybe even pulling him aside and demonstrating it to himself uh, this will help them understand it better and this, cha this has changed their coaching style so um, this could benefit the player and then keep everyone safe. Um, so communication also links in with poor coaching, so if the coach uh, does not communicate well um, with the players then it could be a downfall and could cause injury as the coach might understand and have good knowledge of the techniques and tactics but if he does not communicate that well then the athletes are just, they're no better off because they don't get this information. 
Um, without communication, obviously rules and techniques and how to participate in your respective sport cannot be understood by the players underneath the coach. Um, and therefore, this will cause the athletes that are participating in the game to not understand how to conduct themselves in a safe manner and to protect themselves and their um, teammates. So, for example, if the coach does not communicate the rules in hockey, the players will not understand that when there is an overhead thrown in the air, um, the person underneath the ball it should be five meters away from any other player or the players around them should make themselves five meters distance from the one receiving the ball. Um, preventative measures could be speaking to the participants before uh, going to uh, physical activity to make sure they understand the rules and regulations of the game. This will help keep everyone safe and um, yeah. Um, incorrect technique, so this is specifically for picking up and handling equipment. Incorrect technique for picking up and handling equipment, if wrong, could cause massive injuries to either joints or muscles, um, which could cause uh, muscle strains or muscle tears. Um, heavier equipment should be handled with more care and uh, more people should assist to handle this equipment. This could be a preventative measure as the coach could <coughs> send the players, in, for example in hockey, the coach could send the players to pick up a, a hockey goal and move it as a group instead of sending one person and um, this will prevent that a one person from getting such injuries. Um, if there's uh, yeah, so if the communication is bad, players again will not understand the technique on how to handle equipment um, and this will therefore cause a downfall for them as they could get injured. What sort of injuries might we have from this? Uh, well, specifically when you're picking up heavy equipment, it could be lower back pain um, or lower back strains in the muscles, in the knees if uh, incorrect technique is used. Um, weather effect on a surface, so the weather as an extrinsic factor is a big one in any sport as majority of sports are played outdoors. Um, the weather could affect the playing surface by, for example, if it's raining, the playing surface could be slippery and cause players to fall, um, which will then lead to cuts, bruises, broken bones. Um, so. The weather would obviously reduce the amount of grip on the surface. Um, and another example would be if a field is being baked in the sun for the whole day and then there's a, um, a match on in the afternoon, the ground could be really hard. So if the players fall, um, they could get possibly concussion from hitting their head on the hard ground or bruises and or broken bones if they fall on any part of their body. Um, Preventative measures could be assessing the state of the ground or facilities before uh, participating in physical activity because this, if uh, the facilities are not up to standard or unsafe then um, the coaches could either take um, or implement a measure to make it safe or call off the game if it's not safe enough. Clothing and footwear, so this one is specifically for clothing. Um, the environmental factors that we play sport in could affect us and cause injury, but if we have the correct clothes, then this could reduce the risk. So wrong clothing in different parts of the world could either cause hypothermia or hyperthermia, um, depending on where you are in the world. So for example, in the Parts of countries such as Australia or South Africa, if you're playing cricket in the day or, uh, during the day and you're standing in the sun for the whole day and you're not wearing sun cream or wearing short sleeve uh, t-shirt, your skin will take a lot of sun and this could, could cause heat stroke or even um, cancer uh, later on in your life. So it can also cause dehydration, 
Um, and in the cold, failure of vital organs if they freeze, if you don't have the proper clothing on. So obviously, preventative measures would be wearing the correct clothing for the different environments. So in the cold, wearing a lot of layers and covering up every part of your body. And in the sun, could be wearing long sleeves to protect your skin from the sun, or wearing hats um, so you don't get burned. Um, clothing and footwear, but this time it's more footwear. Um, different types of footwear can affect how we play or can also affect how we get injured on the field. So there's different shoes for different types of sports. Um, so for example, in cricket, if you're training indoors, you, you're not allowed to wear spikes because you could slip or you could tear up the surface, which if you slip, you could fall on the hard ground and um, potentially break a bone or get concussed. But um, outdoors, it's vital that you wear spikes so you don't slip on the grass. Uh, it gives you more grip. Um, and then uh, footwear in cricket also is very protective. So if you get a blow on the foot, if you're batting, you won't do as damage, as much damage to your foot as you would if you were just wearing a normal trainer or sports shoe. Um, and if, for example, if you get hit on the, on the foot, you could get a broken bone. And if you slip, you could pull or tear your muscles and potentially hit your head on the ground and get concussion. Um, so preventive measures is coaches or match officials should make sure that all players are wearing the correct football, I mean footwear for different sports. Um, this will help eliminate injuries and make sure everyone is safe. Um, safety hazards, so this is similar to um, risk assessments. So these are basically to identify hazards or risks in a sporting environment and potentially eliminate them. Um, Faulty equipment or obstructions, for example, could cause harm to players as they can trip or run into something and uh, get injuries. So this could cause broken or fractured bones, bruises, cuts or head injuries or concussion. Um, preventative measures would be checking equipment or facilities clear of any uh, dangerous objects or anything in the way before participating just to reduce the risk of anyone getting injured. Uh, risk assessment, so this is a formal document um, that any facility that players are participating in should have where it identifies risks, their likelihood and, or, and severity um, and an elimination uh, process where it can eliminate the, the hazards from uh, injuring any players. So if these documents are not filled out uh, potential in potential risks could actually um, uh, be well, they could be likely to develop into actual hazards and potentially injure someone. So injuries could be anything that um, could occur from any of the equipment in the facility. Uh, preventative measures make sure that these risk assessments are up to date and checked constantly to make sure that equipment is still faulty. So, um, when we look at the preventative measures with regards to um, the coaches or environment, equipment, those sort of things, what do you think have a bigger impact? Like who, who would have a more of an important role to play in that? And maybe it's both, but why would you say that? Um, I think the younger the players are, the more responsibility the coaches have to make sure uh, the environments that the athletes are playing in our safe um, as young players will not understand the risks and, uh, that could potentially cause them harm but as you get older especially uh, moving towards elite athletes uh, they have to take more responsibility for their own game but um, there's still quite a lot of responsibility on the match officials, coaches, uh, coaching staff to make sure that the environments they're playing in are safe. Um, okay. All right, great, thank you. Thanks, sir.